service. And we hope that what you hear tonight will help you understand what God's intent was at Christmas and throughout the year for each and every one of us. And now, hear God's word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father.
Most gracious and loving God, tonight we gather to remember a miracle, a miracle that surprised even Satan, something so grand, so great, that even 2,000 years later, we not only remember it, we celebrate it. You came to be with us. You came to be one of us. And that makes all the difference. We worship you not because you're the Almighty, but because you're the Almighty of grace, who seeks to know and understand his children, who seeks to be part of our lives, even now, we think about those who need you most, the poor, the sick, those who are distant, those who feel alienated, those who are caught in sin and don't know how to get free. We think about these people because we are these people. At times in our lives, oh God, there is, is always need for you. Tonight, tonight we celebrate that you came. You came to be one with us. Let your spirit wash over us tonight, that that truth will move our hearts to joy and peace. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
it's great to see you all tonight. We have been talking the last few weeks about Advent and learning about the Advent wreath, haven't we? And remember we talked, we said that Advent was a time of preparing and waiting. And we know exactly what we're waiting for, don't we? What is it? Winter? Yeah, winter. Okay, what else? <laughs> Christmas, that's right, Christmas. Oh, the, we, and we got your candles for your wreath. The first week we talked about hope. And we said that we hope that we can be more like Jesus. We can act more like Jesus and try to be like Jesus. And the second week we talked about peace and how Jesus brings peace to our lives. And then last week we talked about love and Jesus bringing all that love to all of us and how much God loves each one of us. And today you learned about joy. Remember what joy J was for? Jesus. O was for others. And the Y was for you. And you are special. Exactly. Exactly right. Well, tonight I am so excited because I get to do the last candle with you. And it is the most special candle. It is the Jesus candle. And it is the most exciting gift that we all can get. Because that is the gift from God. Jesus gave us, I mean, excuse me, God gave us Jesus. And we can go home tomorrow, we can, or tonight, and we can celebrate Jesus, and we can do everything that we want to do for Jesus. And again, God gave us that big special gift. Now, I have gifts in here for you, and your Jesus candle is in here. You may take a box or a bag, one or the other. And then we'll go on over, and Pastor Ron is going to light the Jesus candle. Everybody get one? Get that one? Okay. okay. All righty, let's go on over and watch the Pastor Ron light the candle. He's already done the candle. Oh, there are. See the Jesus candle. Isn't that beautiful, boys and girls? <laughs> okay, you'll go ahead and go back up to seats. And Merry Christmas.
Most gracious and loving God, receive these gifts. Use them well to extend the ministry of Jesus Christ into our world. And use it well to bring your kingdom into our midst. For your glory and our good, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So much of what we see and hear this time of year we call Christmas is wrapped up in all sorts of nostalgic traditions and activities that warm our hearts and make the season magical. Scenes of families gathered at homes to share presents, good food, and the excitement that has become Christmas are all too familiar and a huge part of how we understand Christmas. Much of how we seek to celebrate the season, however, actually has little to do with what that true message of what that first Christmas is all about. Once we strip away all our nostalgic traditions and familiar meanings of the season, we are left with what the Bible actually tells us. But even with that, it may be difficult to appreciate what the Christmas story is telling us unless we can bring the message into our present day world. Tonight, we have tried to do just that.
We are safe here. The woman is right. God will see us through this storm. I've been through many storms just like this one, and God has always seen me through every one. And he is going to be here with us tonight through this storm. You can go down and trust God. I don't care what she says. We're helping I heard you tell the shelter worker that you're going to have a baby. Hmm. Is there something I can do to help? Maybe get something warm to drink? Well, how about your little girl? Would you like something warm to drink? You would, all right. Well, why don't you come with me over there and your mom and dad can see you and you can see them and everything be all right, all right? You come over with me? All right, I'll meet you right over there. Come on. Yeah. What's your name, sweetie? Madison. Oh, Madison. Well, that's a lovely name. wonder what the refugees are saying right now. Let's listen carefully. What a time to be praying. Here we are in the midst of the storm and that woman's going to have a At least they made it to the shelter. Oh, can you imagine if they had made it here? Oh, well, that's all well and good, but this is no hospital. What if something goes wrong? We'll just have to pray and cut. Yeah, it's like that's going to do a lot of good. We all need a miracle, and I don't think there are too many around here right now. God's going to drop on us. So why would any of us think God is going to help us now? Now, you three over there need to stop that talking. They can hear you, and you're not helping with all this negative talk, and you're frightening this child. Madison, let's go over here and finish our drinks. You go this way, and I'll go over here. Now, you just don't pay any attention to those people over there. Your mother's going to be just fine. God got you all here, and God's not going to quit on you now. Why are they so angry and mean? Oh, they aren't angry or mean, child. They're scared. You aren't. Well, I know God is here. You hear that wind and storm out there? And wherever God is present, everything will be okay. You see, Madison? 
they are filled with fear because they are focusing on what scares them. They have trouble seeing God and hearing God because they're spending all their time and energy listening to that storm and thinking about what might happen instead of what is happening right here in this place right now that tells me God is here. So you can see God? Well, not like I can look at you and look at the others, but yes, I see God in things that are right and good and helpful, just like seeing you all get here to the shelter in time to be saved and for your mother to have her baby. And I see the people here all around us who are helping each other and making the best of a very bad situation. You see, child, I believe God is bigger than that storm and the fear and the things that happen to us. And you are sure? Oh my goodness, child, I'm certain. You see, Madison, there comes help for your mother right now. So that person is God? No, not God, but one of God's helpers. God works through others to do what needs to be done. The Bible calls that incarnation. God's Spirit works through real people to help in times of need. That person is one of God's incarnations trying to help your parents. I don't understand. Hmm. Well, maybe I should tell you the whole story from the Bible. When God came to earth at the first incarnation, it's a beautiful story. Would you like to hear it? Good answer. A very long time ago, before any of us were born, there was a man named Joseph, who was like your father, and a woman named Mary, who was like your mother. Let me get my Bible, and I'll read it to you. Big Bible, isn't it? Well, let's see. Uh, let's look at Luke. Chapter 2, and it says, In those days, a decree went out from an Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. So you see, Madison, they had to leave their home and go on a very difficult trip while Mary was pregnant, just like you and your parents. But where was God? Well, that comes out in the rest of the story. Listen, in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. 
To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Now from John, the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John tells us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Now Madison, that baby was the answer to everybody's prayers. For the people were praying for God to send them the Messiah. The Messiah was also called the Christ, the Son of God. God promised to come to the people on earth through the Christ and to save them from everything that scared them. Those shepherds were like us in this shelter, wanting for God to come, but not being able to see or fully understand what God was doing. The angels were like the workers here at the shelter who kept telling us not to be afraid but believe in God and that God is taking care of us. And that EMT with your mother is like the angel who is telling your parents that God is with them and what they need to do. So if we hear the baby crying, we know God is here, just like the angels told the shepherds, and we can go and see him, and then we will believe, just like the shepherds. Well, in a way, yes. Just like the baby born in the manger all those many years ago was a sign of God's presence. The birth of your little brother or sister will be a sign that God is with us now.
Max Licato penned these words to reflect what happened that first Christmas. It all happened in a most remarkable moment, a moment like no other. For through that segment of time, a spectacular thing occurred. God became a man. Divinity arrived. Heaven opened herself and placed her most precious one in a human womb. The, the omnipotent, in one instant, became flesh and blood. The one who was larger than the universe became a microcosmic embryo. And he who sustains the world with a word chose to be dependent upon the nourishment of a young girl. God had come near. He came not as a flash of light or as an unapproachable conqueror, but as one whose first cries were heard by a peasant girl and a sleeping carpenter. Mary and Joseph were anything but royal, yet heaven entrusted its greatest treasure to these simple parents. It began in a manger, 
the momentous moment in time. He looked anything but a king. His face, prunish and red, his cry still and helpless, and piercing cry of a dependent baby. Majesty in the midst of the mundane. Holiness in the filth of sheet manure and sweat. This baby had overcome the universe. These rags keeping him warm were the robes of eternity. His golden throne room had been abandoned in favor of a dirty sheep pen, and worshiping angels had been replaced with kind but bewildered shepherds. Curious, this royal throne room, no tapestries covering the windows, no velvet garments on the curry, no golden scepter or glimmering crown, Curious, the sounds in the court, crows, munching, hooves, crunching, a mother humming, a babe nursing. It could have begun anywhere, the story of a king, but curiously, it began in a manger. Step into the doorway, peek through the window. He is here.
the traditions that have made our Christmas a wonderful. And God wants to bless them. And God does. But the miracle, the miracle transcends our traditions. It is where a God who once perceived distant came close, came near, came not just to be with us, Emmanuel, but to become one of us, to understand, to relate, to make a difference. As you look around you, not just this time of year, but throughout the year, see where you can see God. Listen to where you can hear him. And may God always bless you. Go in God's grace.